And man, I... I mean, I could figure out if it was my end on Discord real quick if we could get somebody else on. Ah, well, we, we can figure that out later. We're already pretty late. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's you. I'm going to be honest. I mean, it probably is. I, I don't know how to fix it, though. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Because you even restarted. Yeah, I restarted my whole computer. And I restarted my whole computer, too. So. Uh, we can figure it out later. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's your fault. Well... I think it's Discord's fault. Mm. I didn't do anything different. Because I thought maybe it was an issue. Because I um, I've got it so I can unplug the mic. Because there's not an off switch on this, sadly. Right. Um, so I just have to unplug it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, maybe it's not a huge fan of being that hot pluggable or whatever. But who knows? Hot pluggable. Yeah, well, ah, well. Also, I should probably let you know that I won't be able to record next week. Um, I'm flying out to Pennsylvania for a job interview, so oh wow, I will be out of town. Mister Fancy Job Interviews. I just get calls, and then they after specifically requesting me, and then they reject me. <laughs> they guessed you. <laughs> oh well, you'll get one eventually. We'll see. I'm trying. Ooh, we am trying. Oh, I should, uh. Ooh, my phone's freaking out. Oh, wow, it really is freaking out. Okay. Uh, turned vibrate off since it's sitting on my microphone cord. That'd be pretty bad. Wait, maybe that's why you, I couldn't hear you. Your voice was getting caught in the microphone because you were squishing it. And it couldn't travel through. <laughs> no, no, uh, I'm not. I'm not squishing the cord. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, let's do the share thing before I forget to do that. Oh, uh, you'll be happy to hear. I just finished part three of JoJo. Hey, you did. Oh, oh. yeah, Matt was. Uh, Matt uh, sent me something on GroupMe about that. I texted him at 4 a.m. because I start. I watched the new. Um, uh, watched the first episode of Part Four. Yeah, he's like, you're like, man, what's even the villain gonna be like? And we both laughed because you're not even ready. No, I'm not. But it's just, I feel like, how are they gonna? Oh, so, so Cars was literally the top top of evolution. The only way he could right. be beat was by getting him far away that he couldn't even fight. Yeah, and then there was Dio who could literally spoilers just in case spoilers 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 skip skip twenty seconds further. Dio can stop time, right? How are they going to top that? You know, <laughs> and a whole oh, still spoilers. Yeah. How Dio died was so stupid. Well, oh he my got god! Punched. <laughs> just got punched and he exploded. Yeah, that was so dumb. <laughs> no, but Sam, he got punched really hard. What? No, that doesn't. Every other time they have some clever like, um, <laughs> oh, you know, I thought I totally thought it was gonna be like um, the old man uh, uh, put hamon in his blood and you absorbed it. And, well, ha ha ha! That's why you were weaker. But no, it was just <laughs> I punched you so hard it shattered your stand. No, but the the thing I texted Matt at four a.m. was a uh, the the picture from part four of. Uh, 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 Star Platinum. Oh yeah, well it's it's a it's a change in art style. It's part terrible, it is works. what it is. No, no, it, you you get you you grow to like it. But okay, but 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 the picture of the picture I sent compared to the normal, I want <laughs> I want my anime men to be the size of a barn door. I don't want them to be you know stickly little guys. No, they're so beautiful. But the high don't think of them. Don't think of them as stickly. Think of them as lean. But the high school like is. The high schoolers are the size of high schoolers. I want them to be larger than the grown men. Not not all of them. Koichi's like two feet tall. <laughs> He's smaller. <laughs> yeah, he is. But oh. everybody's face is just super simplified. I liked it when they were really super detailed. Oh, don't worry. You, you, if, if you keep watching part four, you'll uh, you, you'll grow to like it. I it's will. uh, mm. Well, just think of it like more of a slice of life. <laughs> With stands. 
Yeah, you know what Diablo looks like in part five. You know that the buff boys come back. I I don't know who that is. He, he's he's the pink hair boy. Was he the one from the episode you guys were watching that was uh really that does a uh, King Crimson? Yeah. Okay. He's not even he's not that buff though. Okay. Oh, well, he's buffer than the average. He like, is. They go but... from tw- you said, if you can accept in your heart of hearts that they go from twunks to twinks. You know, you'll have a much better time. <laughs> but no, I see. I saw I've started getting on the um, we're probably going to go over the five minutes here since we're talking Jojo. But um, <laughs> I started to watch or I started looking at the um, the Jojo subreddit. Right. And uh, I I had just because I rewatched part two and Matt was like, why the heck would you do that? I'm like, I just I just think it's neat. It's part two is pretty fun. Yeah, I agree. I really love it. And plus, it has the best OP fight me. Um, it, it does. I agree with that. The part four is a pretty great OP. But I was I was looking at all of those, and uh, one of the tweets was, uh, you know, the the meme guys only want one thing, and it's disgusting. Yeah. And it the picture underneath was uh, the the guy who or the head of the animation studio or whatever, and he's like announcing uh, Battle Tendency Part Two. It's literally just Battle Tendency again. <laughs> I mean, I'd watch it. I did watch it. It's great. You'll like part four. Matt, I rewatched <laughs> part three because we got most of the way through, but I had forgotten a lot of what happened. So I didn't. Uh, that, that, that intricate plot. <laughs> yeah, it's super intricate. <laughs> we must punch Dio, but he's far away. <laughs> I, but I'm, I did notice on my second watch through of most of it, um, they really have. There's not a lot of music in the background, but they constantly have that, like if there's something um, suspenseful happening or something like that, they have yeah. uh, Stardust Crusaders, the song, um, like gently twinking on the twinkling on the piano in the background. I really appreciated that. Ah, it's it's got the leaf motifs. Wait, music? Aren't we a, a music podcast? Oh, yeah, maybe we should <laughs> we, start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should probably start that. I don't know. We might be getting more viewers now as a weeb podcast than a music <laughs> podcast. That'd be an interesting pivot. All right. Now, transfer over. Uh, let me. It, it's probably still gonna say uh, notorious big. Oh wait, are we still? Oh, it didn't change because I restarted. Dang it. Okay, hold on. I got uh, play. I updated the tags, but didn't actually update. Okay, there we go. Now it updated. All right, now we transfer over. And it's still, all this information is wrong here. Oh, man. Ah, oh, well. Today is Just not, changed the title. Yeah, today is not our day, man. <laughs> you want to start doing some introduction while I do this? Yeah, sure. Explain just why make sure we're to change. half an hour late. Yeah, just make sure you uh, change the, the, the screen to uh, that we're streaming now. I did. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I guess, uh, yeah, we're, uh, hey, welcome back. Glad you could join us. We're going to actually start talking about music now. Uh, sorry that we're a little bit late. Discord decided that working just wasn't in its schedule today. So uh, we uh, had kind of jury rig using a cell phone <laughs> as, yeah. a, as a go-between. Yeah, I'm currently talking into my new microphone, which you might notice the um, beautiful dulcet tones of my actual voice instead of speaking through 16 cotton balls um cooper however, it sounds, it sounds the same to me since it's through a phone microphone i have my cell phone behind the brand new microphone and cooper is listening to even worse audio quality so i have to talk a bit louder so he can actually hear me so if i comment honestly my breath he's not gonna be able to hear me kind of adds to the experience yeah and i'm not sure it's discord i'm pretty sure it's you well you know that's a mystery for another day hey we're not playing D. <laughs> No, today we are reviewing Milo X Lodo by Coldplay. Um, so for those of you who may have not heard of Coldplay, all two of you, they are a British rock group. Uh, they formed in London in 1996. Um, They're basically a four-member band for the most part. Uh, the, the one that really is of note, it's kind of like how Maroon 5 is like a member band, but everyone only cares about Adam Levine. Uh, the main lead of it is the lead vocalist slash pianist uh chris martin is the lead singer 
He's kind of the face of the band. And they are, uh, they're not a small band. These are not uh, obscure guys. They have some of the best-selling albums in UK history. Uh, yes, that is including uh, like versus the Beatles. They frequently uh, have the best-selling album of the year whenever they release an album. And uh, their main genre is this kind of alternative pop rock, I'd, I'd say. Kind of this electronica. Yeah. Um, and uh, speaking of which, this is uh, Milo Xlodo, and that is how it's pronounced. Um, this is their fifth studio album, and it was released back in tw- uh, 2011. And uh, it was also a big hit in uh, the UK and around the world. Chart number one in like 32 countries, sold like 8 million units. Right, so not exactly uh, the little album that could. <laughs> it was a big release. And uh, one, of the things you'll, one of the themes you'll find with this album, it's very uh, grandiose, very uh, blown up. Uh, one of the things I found while researching it was the fact that it had seven singles <laughs> released before uh, its release, which is half the album. So I was surprised at how many songs I actually recognized from this. Yeah, they there are a lot of single material, like half the album is single material, uh, which is... Uh, but Coldplay's never had a lack of hits. And uh, actually, another thing, apparently this is a concept album. Uh, I'm not sure if you got any of that from this, Sam. I did not. It just sounded straight up Coldplay to me. Because I was listening. Apparently, <laughs> I was looking it up. Apparently, it's like, get this. This is from the Wikipedia page. This is word for word. The album tells the story of a war against sound and color by a supremacist government set in the world of Silencia, an Orwellian society. Uh, of course, these are all citation needed. Didn't um, realize we were watching Food Fight here. Yeah, no kidding. Uh so ignore that. This is not a concept album. <laughs> I don't care what uh, what the sources say. Just take it. It's like a lot of them, uh, emotional story, if anything. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I had a hard time listening to the actual words of the songs in this one. Oh, the uh, lyrics. The lyrics in these are pretty meaningless. Okay, good. It's like <laughs> it's just like it's kind of like poetry. You know, it's like what the emotion of the lyrics convey less than what they're actually saying. See, I, I like songs like that where I. Because sometimes, especially with this, it's we'll get into it later, where it's so so deeply layered with different tracks and stuff of uh, instruments. So hard to pick out the vocals. Yeah. So, And if you're familiar with Coldplay at all, them using abstract language to convey a point is not something new. They've basically been doing it since day one. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's a brief background of them. And... Uh, so you ready to uh, jump into it, Sam? Uh, yes. I was <laughs> sorry. I was just checking uh, because I need to get better about checking to see if anybody comments on the YouTube uh, for fixing our our things. But nobody oh yeah, commented, and, so. Oh, and uh, speaking of comments, uh, I should mention that this um this particular album was suggested by Proto Swarm. Um, at the suggestion box, which you can find in the description down below in Twitch. So I'd like to give a shout out to Protoswarm for giving a suggestion for it. Thank you. It only took a month. Yes, it only it only took a month to uh, to do. But we covered it. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, well, let's jump straight into it then uh, with I see. track number one, Milo X Lodo, starting off strong with the first song, in quotations, of the album uh, as the title song. Um, yeah. Why don't you go and ahead, it's a, Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a whopping 42 seconds long. Um, there's about, this song is, uh, to give perspective, this is a 14 song album, about 45 minutes long. And, uh, I think, uh, yeah, three of these songs are these like little, um, transitionary songs where, uh, they do, they're like not really songs in their own right as much as like the prepare the listener for the next song. So, uh, this is exactly what the opening track is, Milo Xleto, where it's like, uh, basically this very pretty stringy uh orchestral kind of sound that flows perfectly into uh the second track so there's not really much to cover here it is interesting that they decided to make this the title track um yeah considering it's not a song but maybe that's more just like 
it doesn't fit in with any of the other songs so you got to throw it in somewhere i mean to be fair it feel, i feel bleh, i felt like uh throughout the process throughout listening a couple of the songs their titles did not match the sound whatsoever but you know <laughs> oh, okay the, the 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 lyrics and titles don't really just are just there for emotional emotional oomph instead of like meaning anything so uh, yeah we can just move on to the second track then well i i would like to give my opinion oh, oh, oh thank you very much oh, of course go ahead uh i thought it was very pretty um and this isn't the case for the rest of the lead-in songs i noticed but it flows very well into the first song um a very nice transition between this opening track and track number two uh, which we'll get to in a second but it flows really well and then i'll rag on the other two later that they just are completely different they just felt like putting 30 second riffs in there before other songs so yeah but this one basically a uh it basically is the beginning of hurts like heaven yeah. like they just chopped it off and made it a new, its own song uh which speaking of which the tra- uh title of the second track is hurts like heaven and uh, you want to start this one off, Sam? Sure, just as I finish typing here. Um, so it's a, a nice continuation, as I said before, really flows nicely from Milo X Lotto into Hurts Like Heaven. Um, I really like the strings. Uh, it's got the, the, it's got like, I call them twinges. It sounds like, um, almost like an angry cat noise. I don't know if you heard those at all. Uh, not, um, not. <laughs> but there's a... Uh, the, the string noises which almost sound like a, a muted guitar like they're putting their putting their fingers across the strings and just playing uh, the strings without any pickup uh, it's got a nice mix of electric and acoustic guitar which is really nice um i was really not expecting that guitar solo in the middle that caught me yeah. off guard but it fits i wasn't expecting it to though it was it was a strong guitar solo and a slower song which uh was uh, I, I wouldn't i would call hurts like heaven a slower song it very much keeps up the energy i mean to be fair i've been listening to electronic and anime music so <laughs> it, it felt a bit so, slower so... to me <laughs> oh yeah definitely uh i think it's a definitely a good opening uh song uh for the album i think it kind of uh, helps encapsulate it definitely has some this is both been a lauded and criticized for uh, as Coldplay as they have a very uh, produced sound. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not going to be like your Nirvana, very grungy, you know, raw sound. Um, Coldplay is very uh, like it's like a, it's like a taking it's like drinking Sprite, you know. It's cool and clean and no caffeine. It, you know, it's a very uh, glittery sound, very produced. And this is seen immediately in Hurts Like Heaven, where um, the layers on this album are are astronomical it's like a seven layer dip or like each layer has like a different type of instrument like this song has just to name it uh piano vocals acoustic uh electric bass synth violin uh (laughs) there's like a a lot going on in every song yeah um which uh, can be a turn off for some people i think coldplay uh, really knows how to utilize that sound to uh kind of uh what's that draw out feeling like I said, you don't go for a literal sense in a Coldplay song. You go for kind of uh, the emotional response. Yeah, and I'm uh, just before we continue, I'm not going to let you get away with using that again. Uh, using what? Cool and clean without caffeine. <laughs> you said that same line last week. You gotta gotta think of a new catchphrase. <laughs> Too bad. I like Sprite. <laughs> we don't like have the advertisement. Said. Damn it. Um, <laughs> if they keep saying it, maybe they'll pay us. I'm not. They'll they'll just be like, why pay them when they're already advertising? <laughs> yeah, okay, true. Um, I the one the one criticism I have is um right at the end of the song, they did a fade out when the song had a definite end, which I thought was an odd choice. Um, yeah, because... it kind of has just like these crooning vocals at the very end. They're a little out of place. I noticed too. I, I mean, I felt like that fit with the style, but um, it, I don't know. It, it was starting to fade out, and then the song ended. I was like, well, why why do the fade if the song has an end? It was already, you know, dropping <laughs> down in energy level, so. Oh, what were we talking about last week, how uh, you're not a fan of the fade? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not a huge fan, but it was mainly last week I was talking about um, how that was kind of a thing of the past, where no one really does that anymore. Songs just end now, um, and I guess they still kind of they still do it on the the radio sometimes because I don't know what they have against playing the end of songs. Um, yeah, I think they just like talking over them. Yeah, but yeah, I th- I thought that was odd that I talked about that last week and it came up on the first real song of the album. Yeah, it's the first real song. It's also the first single of the album. Oh, this uh, was a single? <laughs> yeah, this was a single. Well, half the songs of this album were single. And the other the other fourth is uh, 40 second songs. So kind of... Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. Throw a dart and you'll probably hit a single on this album. All right, so let's uh, jump to track number three then, which I had actually heard before. Surprisingly, yeah. I know. Paradise. Yes, uh, this is probably... I'll, I'll I'll say this is probably their biggest song from this album. Oh, for sure. In terms of like wider listening ship. Uh, and uh, it also very much uh, it's a very extravagant song. Uh, like uh, it's like it's like a uh, biting into like a devil's food cake, you know. It's extremely uh rich. Yeah. Some would a say lot of layers. T- a lot of layers, like an onion. It's so dense. There's so, so much dense. going on. <laughs> May have gone a little far in a couple of places, but uh, here it's uh, st- it starts with a very like kind of low key orchestral performance, uh, and then it just blasts into this like synth uh, synth storm, um, which I think works uh, for. Uh, they do this several times in this album where the song starts soft and then goes really uh, energetic and then kind of goes soft again for the vocals. Yeah, that, um, that started that, making me a bit upset as we went on, but they fixed it, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, I think this is probably maybe the best uh, example of it, because it blasts and then immediately goes back to this kind of piano vocal percussion melody um, for the verse, which is very uh, subdued. It also puts a lot of emphasis on uh, Martin's vocal performance, which I think throughout this entire album was uh, very good. Um, it certainly has a certain, like, uh, What's the word? Um, melancholy to it? Yeah. Maybe? it's He has a hard time sounding like anything other than that one setting, I think. <laughs> it's definitely a very constant, but he's very good at uh, hitting the notes and like uh, singing well. It's not like he, he, he can get up there in terms of register. Yeah. He can't go low, though. We'll talk about that later. He had some issues. Um, there is a... Yeah. But I, I really enjoyed this song as well. Um, I had actually heard it, and this was... I had heard another one on this album as well, but this was the one I actually knew. Um, as in, like, I could I, I heard it in its entirety, I think. I Probably on the radio or in a club somewhere. Um, but I appreciated there was kind of a different vocal stylization in this one, which I appreciated because... I know what Coldplay sounds like, and it sounds like the the lead singer, and he never <laughs> sounds any different. So trying to vary it definitely helps. Um, and it, this one did get pretty repetitive. I'm I'm trying not to talk about that as much, but uh, I was, um, you know, sitting and doing something else, and he, it, towards the end of the repetition of it's about the second half of the song, uh, I was starting to pick up on it, even though I wasn't really paying attention to the song. So if you're if you're not really analyzing the music, you should be all right. Yeah. Plus, it has a pretty killer guitar solo at the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the second of two songs to have a guitar solo. <laughs> yeah, I don't really associate guitar solos with Coldplay, but you know, who knows? I mean, even um, looking through this entire album, you'll notice that the electric guitars and acoustics pull in some weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if they're kind of uh, underneath, like the kind of electronic production. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's certainly a lot of layers, and I really appreciate when it um, strips it back, which we'll get to in a little bit. But uh, jump to track number four, then. Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown. Why is it called Charlie Brown? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> they had to probably get that cleared with uh, like copyright, too. You think? Is is the name Charlie Brown copyrighted? I would imagine, right? From Peanuts. 
Let's find out. <laughs> I'm saying the song makes no mention of Charlie Brown. I think he says the word cartoon at some point, but that's about it. Yeah, I did not hear. Did Definitely, yeah. Uh, this one only has an interesting kind of a intro where it's kind of like these weird and unintelligible pitched vocals over a strumming guitar mm -hmm. uh, right at the uh, very beginning. And then, of course, it uh, it bl we're blasting off again, uh, where it kind of it hits the uh, with this cranked up like kind of bass uh, acoustic and electric combo, all kind of playing over one another. And it definitely uh, sticks with the lyrics not make too much sense, but kind of having this uh, I don't know this kind of general feeling of looking for love or being lost yeah. and. Uh, looking for love which i guess is kind of a running theme with this album well apparently it's fighting an orwellian style government for color well yeah yeah that's <laughs> that I'm, I'm just gonna not pay attention to yeah but um i when I, this one started i thought it sounded especially cold play not sure what i mean by that but it just i felt it inside me as <laughs> this is the pinnacle of cold play um there was some really weird voice stuff happening in the background under the pulsing keyboard in the middle-ish. I don't know if you heard that. It, it kind of took me out of the song. It did not fit whatsoever. Um, I want to say about the halfway point. It was just kind of the pulsing keyboard and bass. And then underneath there was some weird, not voice modulation. I don't know what it was, but it was very odd. And no, I did not have another tab open, so it wasn't that. <laughs> um Oh, I kind of wish. <laughs> I heard you made that mistake once. Uh, there was a Not lot, again. A lot of vertical depth in these, like we've kind of talked about already. Um, but I feel like as we go on, while it sounds very nice, it becomes less and less effective uh, just due to the fact that every song is that way. Yeah, um, there's, I mean, there's a few stripped back songs here. Yeah, and oh. we get into track number five in a second, which is exactly... Uh, exactly that but this is just kind of getting to the point where it's like okay yeah I've, I've heard this high power tons of layers tons of stuff going on it's it's so dense um, <laughs> and then I really appreciate the piano at the end that brings the energy down without just kind of chopping it off uh, I think yeah this is definitely one of the best endings for a song on this album yeah yeah because it doesn't need like this weird like 40 second song in between to like change the energy this one just kind of has a very soft piano energy that helps bring down the energy for uh, the next song, which is maybe probably the softest song on the album. I think there was another one that was a bit softer. Yeah, but this is definitely one of the softest ones. And also the song structure on this one's pretty interesting. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but it doesn't really have a chorus per se. It just kind of transitions from like verse to verse without like any like uniting chorus, uh, which is kind of unique for like a five minute song. Yeah, and it, I mean it was it's a good song. All these songs have been I will there's not really one song on this album that I thought was like, "Eh, that was that wasn't that was kind of bad." All of them are good. Just some of them are a little bit bland. This is not one of those songs. This is, you know, starting off the album, got to pump out the first 3 strong songs in a row so then you can go into kind of a more laid back uh feel for mid album. I mean, Charlie Brown was also a single. <laughs> of course it was. If it if it was over 30 seconds, it was a single, right? <laughs> I jump into track number five, then. Us Against the World. Us Against the World. Yeah, so this is this is the soft song I was talking about. It's a very much, uh, it's basically just uh, Martin's voice, an acoustic guitar kind of taking center stage. Um. It's a very, very pretty little ditty here we got. I think it's a very good change of pace. Mm -hmm. I really appreciated um, the rever bleh, reverb on the vocals, uh, which did a lot to make the vocal performance stand out as opposed to the other songs. Because if it was just the layered acoustic guitar and um, his normal vocals, I feel like it would have been lacking. But the reverb adds a nice little extra bit of depth. Right. Because it's only a, a very strict back song, mm -hmm. but it's, but I think sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, but I think that with especially with the reverb to add a little depth, 
it really helps uh, the vocal performance to pop. Mm-hmm. And this is this song is desperately needed at this point to kind of cleanse, like a palate cleanser. You know, yeah. You don't go from eating the spicy tuna roll to eating the eel. You got to have a bit of ginger in between to cleanse your palate. And this is that ginger that kind of wipe wipe off that uh, super produced sound to get ready for <laughs> the next journey up. Uh, <laughs> now you're making me hungry. Sorry. Apologies if you haven't had dinner yet. Jump into track number six. Uh, you want to say what you think this one is, Cooper? Uh, what, M-M-I-X? Is that Roman numerals? Or do you think it's abbreviation? Pro- I think it's probably Roman numerals. Uh, that stands for like 2009. Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, it's another transition song, so it doesn't really mean anything. There's no vocals. I really uh, it's like, basically. Sorry, I really like the spacey bit. It's super nice with the, the <laughs> no. key, keyboard kind of going down. The whole thing's a spacey bit. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really mesh with the next song, though. It, it, uh, it's got like some chords that it, carried over. It kind of does. But the feel that this one produces is not the feel that track number seven, Every Teardrop is a Waterfall, produces. Also a single. Yeah. I mean, I think it just kind of like add a little space between uh, Us Against the World and Every Teardrop is a Waterfall since they are two uh, very different songs. Um, Us Against the World having this very kind of uh, low-key, soft, almost sad energy. Every Teardrop of the Waterfall is very upbeat acoustic electronic song yeah yeah okay i i see where you're coming from so just add a little add a little breathing room so you don't have to like thunk go right into it fair enough and uh yeah that uh this is a uh, like i said a very energetic song very upbeat uh, with the vocals going uh going off as usual and hitting a whole wide range with energy and uh i like uh the way this uh song really uses their mix of like electric guitar and acoustic guitar um usually they get buried but here's like the guitar work really shines through Mm -hmm. i will say this is another one i heard i've heard uh surprisingly Mm -hmm. i know but um there i don't know if you picked up but they're actually playing there i can't quite hear you what was that coop Did your phone die or something? No. Can you hear me? Hello. Hey, sorry. One moment, guys. We're having some technical difficulties. Yeah. So how this whole this whole thing is working pretty much is uh, Cooper calls me, and then he listens to the call. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. There it is. I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure all these technical difficulties are on your end. <laughs> well, maybe. I, I I don't know how to stop them, though. Let me uh, pull my phone off of Wi-Fi real quick. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, what were you saying? I was just saying, surprisingly, again, this is one I've heard. Uh, Cooper, stop listening to your own music. No, I'm not. <laughs> that just played by accident. And then... Um, I don't know if you picked up on this, but there's actually a unique acoustic guitar line in each ear. Um, oh, really? It's it's the I same. It's the same. Like they're playing the same thing, but if you listen, you they actually strum at different times, um, and that that was really cool. It was very very. It took me most of the song to pick up on it, but it was really really cool. Um, oh, that's interesting. I didn't even notice yeah, that. Yeah, and I really prefer it to the you know playing one ear versus playing the other ear, like uh, a lot of the older older bands like to do. But having something unique in each ear, but similar enough to where it's just a little bit different, um, produced a really cool soundscape, so to say. Soundscape, Ooh. Um, but it's not you know annoying you by. You're like, okay, well, I have to, I'm two halves of my brain are trying to do two different things. Um, and there was a lot of lyric, v- lyrical variation uh, until it gets about halfway through, which I liked. Uh, you know what I'm yeah. talking about. No, no, no. The lyrics definitely varied. I mean, they weren't, <laughs> again, it's not like they were telling a story. Yeah, I couldn't tell what Various. they were saying, but I appreciate it. Something about like a trapeze, something yeah. about teardrops. 
I appreciate um, that they weren't just screaming uh, Paradise. <laughs> well, like the song Paradise? Yeah. No. No, this song definitely, uh, I think it caps- it's kind of like the, uh, the song probably best represents what this album is. It's kind of upbeat, energetic, emotional abandon. I'm just like, yeah, this, this is, this is, this is the future. And like being happy about it and like very, uh, dense, but like in a, in a very positive way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, because, uh, a lot of these songs are tense, but I think this one definitely puts it to the best use of having like a, uh, emotional vision behind it. Let's say. Yeah, I agree. Jump into, uh, the next track then track number eight major minus major minus uh i guess this is if, if we're talking orwellian this is probably the only orwellian song on this album <laughs> i didn't pick up on it well it's definitely the uh the kind of black sheep of this album because it's got a it's kind of got this dark sound to it it's a, a very ominous song the acoustics are played kind of in this minor key and the uh, lyrics are like these things about like spying and like running away hmm. um of course it keeps the energy uh but it definitely has this kind of uh what is it this this uh dark feel to it hmm, i see what you're saying um the one thing i really picked up on this one was the um i don't i don't know if it was a filter or maybe I'm thinking of the next track. But there was kind of a filter on um, the vocalist to make him sound different since, you know, he does one style and that's it. Right. And, um, I think we already did the song. I can't remember. I forgot to write it down. But there was one song uh, prior to this point where he attempts to go low, like sing a lower note, and you can just hear his voice crack. Uh, it's probably us against the world probably it's also against the world yeah he can't <laughs> it seems like he can't sing outside of falsetto which is in, which is interesting yeah he's definitely most comfortable in the higher range yeah. this is if you listen to his uh the the previous album which is uh viva la vida there's a couple songs like uh lost where he tries to sing lower and it's no is like usual range that it kind of it really catches you off guard sorry what was that cooper you went rubber band there for a second oh sorry he, he in the previous album he he also goes low occasionally it, it catches you off guard every time yeah it's not like bad but it's also you can clearly tell it's not like his like comfort zone yeah um it i don't know it I should have wrote, written it down where we actually talked about the song, but that just came into my mind since he, they try and make him sound different as much as they can, but it's hard to do when he really just sings one way. Um, and it, this was another acoustic song, which I appreciated a little too soon, maybe, you know, just after uh, teardrop is a waterfall so you had one sh really like out there song but then before that was us against the world which was just the acoustic um but this one does the transition like we talked about before where it's slow and then it builds up which they kind of abuse to a point and i'm not <laughs> a huge fan of it by the end they do abuse it but at the very least uh, this one has uh probably the best bass line in the album um the bass definitely is very overshadowed in most of these songs. I uh, feel sorry for the bassist <laughs> in Coldplay, yeah. but uh, it definitely shines here. And then later in the song, the it kind of gains this uh, electric guitar uh, with the acoustic that really adds like some urgency to the song. So I think it's a it's a good progression overall. Yeah, yeah, it's a I I don't know this one I I didn't have as much for. That's fair, but it's definitely a, a little bit of a different take for this album. Yeah. And then we can uh, jump on forward to track number nine, UFO. Uh, I believe it's pronounced UFO. Uh, U, U, uh, F, uh, UFO. Yeah. UFO. There we go. And of course, that stands for... Are you actually asking? or Yeah, an yeah. Unidentified flying object. No, but in this song. Uh, ultimately forgettable overall. 
Oh, that's actually pretty, <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty apt for the song, actually. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not—it's not a bad song. It's just like it's like this quick little ditty, where it's another uh, acu mostly vocals and acoustic, kind of like us against the world. But it's a very, very short, uh, just t a quick two minutes. It just kind of uh, almost serves as like a palate cleanser between. Uh, the more energetic songs of a major minus and the uh, next song. Yeah. Um, I really liked, though, I will say, the change in the microphone. Did you notice how he sounded a lot warmer? Uh, yeah. Just, his singing? Yeah, um, it's definitely a, a more a warmth in this song that the other songs don't really have. And it kind of fades in and out, and I really wish they had just used that mic for the whole, or whatever settings for the whole thing. Because uh, picking a mic that would filter out some of his higher stuff and allow him to have a deeper sounding voice, uh, since he has trouble, it, at least it sounds like he has trouble hitting low stuff, it sounded really good. Uh, just just for a change from that bright microphone that they've been using the whole time. Um, and it really, it worked well, in my opinion, for the for using it in a slow song. Um, because... You know, went a bit warmer with the violin, which is traditionally a bit of a warmer instrument. Um, and who doesn't love some good violin? Uh, they do. They do use it to its full extent in this album, I'd say. Yeah, and I, I'm really glad they finally committed to a slower song rather than build it up halfway through. Um, kind of blast out. Yeah. Now this one's slow all the way, even if it's a, if, even if it is a quickie. But it's a very good song. I liked it. And it uh, carries us pretty cleanly into the next song, Princess of China, featuring the one and only Rihanna. And it's the uh, only feature on this album. Since Coldplay doesn't really do features in general. And I mean, if you're going to have a big feature, you might as well have Rihanna, right? Yeah. And I think uh, her uh, vocal performance of the song is uh, very well done. Uh, she goes for a very dramatic vocal performance which I think fits well with the Martin's general <laughs> uh, dramatic performances. So they mesh well together, at the very least. And this is an extremely glittery song. Uh, to the umpth degree. Yeah. It basically pushes it to its extreme. <laughs> Would you agree? Yeah, for sure. Uh, with this kind of hallmark uh, swelling and synth and percussion. And uh, I think the harmonies between the two, the two singers uh, work really well, especially paired with the piano. Yeah, I thought their vocal styles matched really well. Uh, a lot better than I thought they were going to going into the song. Yeah, because Rihanna, you, you wouldn't imagine Rihanna and Coldplay working that well together. Yeah, <laughs> ja genre rise. It, but yeah, it actually... They sound really works good together. Uh, and actually, you'll be surprised to know, this actually wasn't a single for the album. That's surprising. Yeah, that's because I'm lying. It was a single. Oh, okay. <laughs> of course. It's got Rihanna. It has to be a single. Uh, I will say I'm not a fan of... they. It seems like they attempted to get this song and the previous to flow together, which didn't really work since they just immediately took off. They're two very different songs. Yeah, they, they kind of had some overlap, though, which wasn't super... Um, and I, I really enjoyed the synth. They started laying it back on, you know, the, the super heavily produced, like we were saying earlier. Uh, even though it felt, the song felt like it was a bit flat. I don't know about you, but it just... I wasn't, I wasn't picking that up, that up much, too much. Maybe I just wasn't vibing with it. I don't know. I think uh, it was going for a, a very, uh, very cinematic sound. Yeah. Um, like it's, like I said, it, re it really was leaning into that emotion. Yeah. Some sort of like expressing like this pain over like losing someone. Uh, so, yeah, and I guess that leads into a bit of um, around the three minute mark. Almost every all everything drops out except for a bit of synth, um, for maybe about twenty seconds, and I didn't really feel like that fit. It just it felt like a blank spot in the song because then everything comes back. It swells back up, um, but I'm guessing there was something going on in the vocals that I could barely hear uh, that were saying like something about loss and that it everything drops out which would make make more sense right and it kind of immediately went into the, like the vocals at the very end they're like talking about how you you uh 
what, what what's the vocal, what's the lyrics it's like but you you didn't you didn't hurt me or something very loud it's a very mm. solid song and a, and a great use of a feature yeah i think their their singing together was the highlight of the uh of the song so good for rihanna I hope she uh, got a little uh, bump in popularity after this. She needs it. <laughs> it's not like she's li- literally the best-selling artist of this decade. Yeah, wasn't wasn't she way bigger than Coldplay at this point? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> uh, jump into track number eleven then. Up in flames. Up in flames. Um. Honestly, if any of the. Uh, I'm surprised because if any like space in this album needed like one of those transitionary songs, uh, between Princess of China Up in Flames is like the biggest one. Because like I said, Princess of China is like this super glittery produced song. Mm-hmm. And Up in Flames just kinda has this starts with doom, ta, the doom, ta. It's like that slow and it's just percussion. Yeah. And the vocals are like very stripped back um as a slow song. Uh which worked well with uh, it worked well with us against the world, but here I think it kind of falls flat. It's almost like too skeletal. Yeah, um, I when I when I write this stuff now, I try and work on something else at the same time. So I'm not so I'm listening to it, but not analyze nitpicking every little tiny detail, you know. Right. And I think I missed almost all of the song. <laughs> On accident, just because I, there was not enough happening in it for it to you know trigger receptors in my brain. Um, yeah, it's a very very slow song, not in a good way. Um, it sounds nice. I mean, all these sound songs sound nice, but this one just doesn't really have anything extra to write home about. The piano is very good, but yeah. Um, but honestly, kind of it, it's kind of six. It's like the sore thumb of this album. Or just kind of like it's there, and at least most of these songs, you know, that it's got your attention. If anything else, mm-hmm. this one just kind of exists, and then it ends. Um, it doesn't really bring anything to the album, I think. And it it's such a weird whiplash from <laughs> Princess of China. Yeah, that's the, that's what draws your attention in a negative way. Yeah, and uh, the uh, the guy who recommended this brings up a good point. That this, he says, this is one of those songs that grows on you after listening, and I find that's the case for almost anything. Um, What was it? Uh, We did "Hellbent" by Mystery Skulls. I used to not be a fan of that song whatsoever, and now I listen to it probably about every other day. (laughs) So, you do like that album? (laughs) Yeah, it's it's great. It's great walking and running music. Um, It is, but it's some of these things you can't really pick up on it. It really grows on you after a couple listens. Um, Oh, well, I have listened to Milo Soto more than a couple times. Uh, and up in flames has never grown on me. No, it, everybody's different. Just cause that's you true. don't that's like true. it doesn't mean you won't. That's true. That's true. But if you like it, you're wrong. Um, no, no, that's if you like up in flames, that's fine. Yeah, you're only just you're just not allowed to like origins. That's the only that's the only one. <laughs> that's the only one. <laughs> I will stand firmly on that. <laughs> My sister actually was uh, got into a pretty heavy argument with me about that one. About origins yeah. by Imagine Dragons. Yeah. She likes it. Uh, I think she's listened to like one song on it and was insulted that I didn't <laughs> like the album. I'm like, have you actually listened to it? It's really bad. Yeah, she listened through the entire album. Then says she's like it. Then maybe I'll <laughs> yeah. be like, mm, sit through the entire thing. Uh, jump into track number 12, though. A Hopeful Transmission. Which is just, it's the third and final transition song on this, this uh, album. This is absolute garbage. Um, not, the, not the transition piece, but looking at it as a whole with track 13 uh, leading in, there's... It's not a transition, first of all, because at, right at the start of track 13, it just takes off like a rocket. Um, <laughs> I also noticed that. Uh, there should have been more overlap, I think. Uh, it's just like build, it, 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 it tries to build the energy from up in flames, but like <laughs> it doesn't have enough time to in like the 30 seconds. Right. So it's like it's still trying to catch up whenever uh, Don't Let It Break Your Heart uh, takes off. Instead of being um, a curve up, 
uh, a hopeful transmissions like a linear progression and then it immediately shoots straight up into <laughs> track 13 don't let it break your heart which is weird since it's they think they could have just made it slightly longer yes but i mean yeah no it just goes right to uh the second to last song on this album uh i guess we might as well just get into it uh don't let it break your heart which goes right in the energetic right off the bat um it's actually hilarious if you listen to the song on shuffle which i have uh this song just like <laughs> it's just <laughs> right off the gate yeah this doesn't give you much of a warning um and uh this is probably the one song of the album i don't have too much to say about overall um it's not bad but it doesn't really have anything particularly new for the album at this point i don't think yeah i mean um The, it, it was a bit repetitive, repetitive, yeah. Uh, even when not paying attention to it, which is a bit of a complaint. Um, if I can sit and zone out to something else and pick up on how repetitive it is, uh, it's not a good thing. Maybe I'm focusing a bit too much on the music. Still, I don't know. But I mean, how much? How how do you listen to music? You know that's that's a that's a discussion for another day. Well, that's just kind of cerebral. Yeah, and I think that I think we're not qualified for that one. Yeah, uh, I mean there are parts of the song that were nice. I di- I don't know if you picked up on this, but they actually had, it was, I think it was a bass drum, um, but doing a heartbeat in the background, um, which at the end was a little bit creepy. <laughs> it caught me off guard, but then I was like, oh yeah, I guess they were doing that throughout the song um so that was cool it does have a a little bit of a heartbeat um i don't know this song just didn't jive with me that much um i'm not quite sure what i can put my finger on for it it just i I think maybe it shows that this whole like a very produced sound can be a bit of a balancing act Mm. that coldplay has for the most part been able to pull off um obviously we've we've listened to artists in the past that have a very produced sound, and it completely blows up in their face. Uh, there's too much going on; they can't handle all the so all the dense. cosmic energy, right? For the most part, Coldplay has been able to, if not perfect, at least master the mm-hmm. art. And I think this is like the one slip up where it kind of peeks through of like, okay, if you don't quite have it all together, then the song can feel off. Yeah, and you gotta not not trying to defend the song if i mean it just it just depends on your mood a lot too um you know you're in a crappy mood or you're in a, a fast-paced mood you know a fast-paced mood well you, living you, life a quarter mile at a time exactly if you're if you're feeling electronic music and somebody throws on some jazz even if it's your favorite jazz you know you're, not, you're not gonna feel it so also speaking of which uh, tangent i saw a fast and furious for the first time yesterday I've not, it was, so I can't comment. It's was, it was pretty. It was pretty dumb. <laughs> Are you talking about the the first one where they're stealing VCRs and? Uh they're stealing DVD players. Thank you. Okay. It's two thousand one. Those were very expensive. They still are kind of expensive. <laughs> they still are, but no one uses them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's just it's a good song. There's just not. I feel like it doesn't bring much new to the table. Yeah, which uh, is. I feel like a lot of uh, albums we listen to kind of fall into that uh, danger of uh, once you get to the back half of the album, uh, you got to be careful of like kind of repeating yourself. Because once you get that point, you know, people have already heard it. And it's like, well, OK, it's just like the song before, but not as good. Yeah. Well, you, you got to think, too, of how much uh, stylistically goes into it, because you have... Um, when you had vinyl you had the b-sides right and tapes yeah you had b-sides and then cds come along and there's not a b-side anymore it's all one thing so i i feel like um probably i'm just speaking out of my butt and i'm speaking in my ass here i feel like the overall quality has um improved in general like we're holding it to a higher standard Oh, definitely. But, I, I agree with there. I'm saying that that pattern still persists a little bit, to a lesser extent, certainly. Yeah, but there's, I mean, how there's many, still uh, a bit of a B-side going on. Yeah, how many Elvis songs are just gone into the abyss because 
it was, an, it was a B-side to like a song that's much more popular and they just need to fill up space. Yeah. Yeah, then I think we can uh, move on to the uh, last song on this album. Up With The Birds. And this one starts off uh, very soft uh, with like just vocals and piano. Very, uh, very pretty vocals. Very good piano. Uh, I'm not a fan of this kind of weird breathing sound effect that goes over the first half. I didn't pick up on that. Yeah, if, if you listen back through, it's kind of like it sounds like someone exhaling, like <sighs> which is like right in your ear, and I'm like, mm, not quite a fan of that. But uh, then it goes into the actual second half of the song, which adds like this a guitar and acoustic, and it's really sharp. I really like it. Mm-hmm. Um, it probably has the best vocal performance by Martin on the album. You think really? I think so. Just cause, uh, he's really drawing out the notes and like hitting these, uh, I mean, he's always hitting the high notes, but particularly here. And, uh, I don't know. I feel like the emotional performance is maybe the best, uh, on this song. And it's hard to describe how it differentiates from like previous songs to like adding emotion. But I feel like he's kind of pushing himself to re- on performance wise on up with the birds. Hmm. I felt like it was a little bit slower, um, in my opinion. I kind of not, not like, um, you know, the acoustic songs. But I was I was kind of wanting something a bit more upbeat, like a Princess of China or, um, every teardrop is a waterfall to be you know on the final go out with a bang because they've kind of got that really produced sound you know um yeah i think honestly this is a very this was a very good way to end the album mm, um i, I kind of wish it was something else it's very I, i'll agree it's a very very good song but I, I think i was expecting something else for the end of the album maybe uh i guess maybe like production side wise i can understand that but i think the emotion of the song is it has a very um the message is like acceptance right yeah. up with the birds um of course obviously it's not the store itself as much as the emotional meaning of it and what i got from it is like this kind of emotional acceptance so as in terms of like resolving an album i think this was a very good like emotional resolution yeah that's a good point and i i really enjoyed uh the the initial piano i know you said you didn't like the first half but the the initial piano that kind of goes into the song, I really loved. I, I feel like they did not do nearly enough piano on this album for how strong they are with it. It really fits their style. Um, <laughs> I mean, they had a lot of piano. I think it was just very usually uh, yeah, buried. Covered, yeah. Was that thing? Point. I I feel like uh, a nice slow song that had piano would have been nice, but you know, they kind of did that in up in flames, but not not to the extent I was seeking. I don't know. It's nah, just, hard to just say go listen. To, just go listen to the scientist by them. Okay, I will. I'll check they'll that have, out. They'll have plenty of uh, plenty of piano for you. But uh, the piano really reminded me of uh, actually over the garden wall. The first first little ditty as they get into it, which comes like oh, and then it immediately launches into the cold play, super layered, super stylized. And I really liked that kind of up uptick in it. Uh, this was probably my favorite starting to any of the songs on the album. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I felt like I was looking for something else to end the album. I'm not, it was a very good song. It's just, I feel like there was something else, something missing in my mind that I wanted to end with, something that had been oomph. I don't know. It was a little bit of a softer thing, but I think, yeah. I think it worked for th- this kind of album. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh. That was all uh, 14 tracks. It was all. That was track four. Well, three of them are just kind of there, but. Yeah. Well, but this still can't. I guess I'm more like 11 tracks. Yeah. Seven of them are singles, but. <laughs> <laughs> you want to uh, say your favorite and least favorite first? Yeah, I think I'll start. Um, I think for my favorites, probably a two way tie between. Uh, First is Every Teardrop is a Waterfall. I think it's uh, the best example of their kind of energetic, upbeat uh, sound. And then it's like a tie with uh, Up With The Birds, which kind of has their more softer emotional side. Mm-hmm. I think both really showed their strengths. And I'm glad that they uh, we had an album that ended on a uh, strong note. 
Yeah. Uh, as opposed to a low note, as a lot of albums that we've been listening to have. Yeah, we've not had uh, one that ended this well, or it was this consistent the whole way through for a while. Right. Um, I did think the back half was a little weak. Uh, my least favorites were probably Up with the Fl- Up in Flames slash Don't Let It Break Your Heart. I thought that little stretch of album wasn't quite up to snuff with the rest of it, uh, which is kind of a shame that the second to last leg of the album was a bit weak. Um, it didn't click. But uh, again, they weren't bad songs. They just, um, I felt, didn't quite live up to the uh, the rest of the quality yeah. of the album. Yeah. What about you? I've, I've got to agree. I've got a bit of a tie, too. Every Teardrop is a Waterfall as well. Um, mm-hmm. It's a very good song. I mean, I've heard it before, too, so that always helps. Um, but also, uh, Hurts Like Heaven. I really enjoyed that one. Um, and it really, it was the first one that kind of whipped me out with the uh, guitar solo that I wasn't expecting. So I, I like that, kind of subverting my expectations. Um, and plus, you know, Milo X Lodo leading into that was that's probably one of the stronger starts to an album i've ever seen um yeah i feel like i said that last week too i don't know <laughs> <clears throat> um I've, I've certainly said that about something else i'm sure and then for least favorite um i'm probably gonna have to go with uh ufo okay um or uh rather not maybe not ufo uh may, maybe major minus i, I think um it just kind of got on my nerves with the constant slow building up to the fast song. Um, I, I liked some of the stuff like there's nothing, there's not one on here. It's like, Oh, I hate this song. It, this one is just kind of the weakest uh, looking back in my opinion. Okay. That's fair. Definitely was a bit of a odd duck in terms of style. Yeah. But you know, in a, oh. a different time of day, I'd probably be like, Oh yeah, that's, I'm going to listen to this one now. So. <laughs> Maybe when you're a little more, a little more, uh, a little more sad boy, uh, a little more melancholy, a little melancholy. That, yeah, that's what I said, melancholy. Oh, must that must be your uh, your uh, accent? Yeah, that's <laughs> how we say it up north. Up north. <laughs> okay, and I guess we'll move up to uh, our final rating. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I guess uh, you always explain the rating system, so I'll explain it this time. I'll give you a little break there. All right. So basically, we uh, rate uh, our system uh, based on a, uh, since we're audio shop, and me and Sam both know so much about uh, cars. We're both big uh, auto boys. We both like them cars. Um, so we have this, uh, it's basically a one to five rating scale with the lowest being scrapyard. This is the Garbo. This is the stuff that it's not even worth it. You just throw it away. And then it goes all the way up to showroom, which is, this is the pristine stuff. You're going to want to show this off to all your friends, to your parents, your grandma. Uh, so basically a one to five rating system. And uh, if we feel like it's a, like a 4.5 or 3.5, we'll say maybe it's light or strong or weak or medium. Um, so I like my music I, extra rare. Extra rare. <laughs> my rare used rental. No. Uh, so I'm thinking for, uh, for this one, my rating is going to be a... Uh, medium to strong like new like i said this was a very um a very solid album certainly one of coldplay's bests uh best um this has it's a little weaker in the second half like i said that kind of uh double hitter of up in flames to hopeful Tr- transmission to don't let it break your heart kind of spoils the last half of the album a bit um but I think it gets its point across well. Very emotional. I think it uh, showcases Coldplay's strengths to a very strong degree. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just a lot of these songs are just they're single material. They, this s- s- album somehow did have en- enough material to have seven good singles, and I think that shows. Yeah, it's a very uh, tight album that keeps a coherent emotional core, and I appreciate that about it. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna give it a like new. And uh, I think this is a, a first in audio shop history. I'm also giving oh. it a like new. Oh my goodness. Uh, Are we agreeing? Yeah. I mean, mine's a low like new. Um, it's still a like new. Yeah. It, uh, it's official. Coldplay bridges the cultural divide. Yeah. While I would probably not seek this out to listen 
in my own. I don't know. Coldplay just isn't really one of those bands because I've I've heard quite a bit of them because hard not to. They've been around for quite a while. <laughs> um, not one I would sit down and listen to the whole whole album again. But um, like you were saying, there's just so many good songs on this. Um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't say sit down and listen to the album in order. Maybe just uh, open it up and hit shuffle. And if you don't like something, skip. It's a, it's a very strong album. A lot of very good songs. Um, and yeah, while... this, this de- sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's definitely an album that you don't have to listen in order. Since it's like more emotion over story, mm-hmm. uh, you can really jump around with it. Yeah. I will say they did a very good job um, breaking up the uh, higher energy songs with the slower songs. We didn't really complain at all this week about eh, it's getting a bit repetitive with the high energy or a bit repetitive with the slow. So they, they did a good job with that. But, you know, to some extent that might be just maybe they can really be played in any order. So Yeah, and I think uh I think it goes to show that having like a uh having a um tightly knit album like this uh really benefits because some albums can kind of get a little overblown. Um I think this one was just the right length to keep its focus. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Solid listen, I would recommend. For sure. It's a good album. Yeah. And uh, so thank you again, uh, Proto Swarm, for this uh, good suggestion. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you, if anyone was listening super hard at the start, but Cooper has already said that we are not going to be doing it next week. Yeah, I'll be out of town for a job interview. Sorry. Um, well, I uh, won't be around for uh, for the podcast then. Unfortunately, I can't, uh, <laughs> I can't stake my future career on podcasting. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. not till we get that sprite uh that sprite sponsorship then i'll drop everything <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna keep trying for that sprite sponsorship oh, i'm gonna say it every day. week somehow i'll work it in it'll make sense uh, i assume that means you can't do it on monday either uh no i'll be out of town like that entire weekend and into the next week All unfortunately right. so we're gonna have another two-week break but again because of cooper hey sorry that's it's the end of the summer and life's uh getting the way a little bit but Two weeks from now, we will have a new album for you to listen to. So look at the Twitter to uh, know ahead of time what we'll be listening to. And check out the YouTube, uh, youtube.com. Search Audio Shop. All of the past album uh, discussions, I guess that's what we call them, uh, yeah. will be up there and uh, have, a, have a chance to listen. Yeah, so hopefully he'll join us in two weeks' time when we uh, discuss uh, whatever next album we discuss. Yeah, we're we're not that far ahead yet. We'll probably decide uh, three days before, as usual. <laughs> hey, but or maybe like six days since we have two weeks. Yeah, we'll we'll try. Maybe I'll pick something this time. But yeah, so um, thank you so much for listening, and uh, you have a wonderful night. See you later, shoppies. Every time. There it is. Every time. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye.